Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. Did you ever ask yourself how end-to-end -end encryption actually works or what end-to-end -end encryption means? If yes, this is the right video for you. In this video, we will discuss what the term end-to-end -end encryption actually means. We structure this video into five different parts. In the first part, we will discuss the three states of data, data in transit, data at rest, and data in use. Then we will discuss what transport encryption actually means. After that, we will see what end-to-end -end encryption is. And after that, we will see a few examples for applications implementing end-to-end -end encryption. For instance, messengers or email clients. And finally, we will have a brief look at how to achieve end-to-end -end encryption using Cryptool2. When we speak of data, we define three different states. The first state of data is the data in transit that we have here. So this cloud here is the internet and you send some data through the internet. That means we have data in transit. Examples for data in transit are the internet, mobile data, or wireless data. And in this video, we will discuss how to achieve security for data in transit with two different techniques, with the transport layer encryption and with end-to-end -end encryption. The second state of data is data at rest. You can see here data depicted in some kind of database. And examples for data at rest are your local hard drive or data stored in a cloud storage or data, for instance, photos stored on your phone. And finally, the third state of data is the data in use. This is depicted here as a user who's working on some data at his computer. An example for data in use is open data in any application. For instance, you edit a text file or you work on an image file using the image editor. Now let's discuss what is transport encryption. And transport encryption assures the secure transmission of data, for instance, through the internet, for example, between a client and a server. And we speak of transport encryption since you encrypt the transport, the actual transport, for instance, with the OSI layer model, the transport layer, where you transfer the data, then you encrypt above this transport layer your data. And with the World Wide Web, for instance, we usually rely on transport layer security, TLS. This is a security protocol for securing data transmission through the internet. And this protocol ensures that our data is encrypted. How does this look like in a model of the internet? Here we have the internet as a cloud and we want to send data from Bob to a web server, for instance, a request, and the web server will answer with the web page, for instance. Both parties agree on a key. Here you have the yellow key, for instance, with the Diffie-Hellman key exchange, or they use some kind of asymmetric encryption and certificates. And using this key, they encrypt the data. So Bob encrypts his messages, the messages go encrypted through the internet and the web server then decrypts the messages and can read the messages. And then the web server, for instance, answers with the web page. The web server encrypts the messages with the same key, sends the data back to Bob. Bob decrypts the data and can view the web page. And this is the transport layer security and the transport encryption. Now we go a bit further to end-to-end -to -end encryption and what this actually means. For that, we have an example now here. Let's think of two persons who want to communicate using a messenger application. And our messenger here encrypts or sends data between Bob and Alice. So in our model, we have a messaging server in the middle of Alice and Bob, and both are connected to, um, to the server here. And the communication is encrypted between Alice here and the server, and the data is encrypted between Bob and the server. Here we still have 
Transport Layer Security or Encryption. But here is now the problem and why we don't have end-to-end -end encryption here. The server can still read messages that Bob sends to Alice and Alice sends to Bob. Why is he able so? Bob clearly encrypts his data before he sends it through the internet here. But the server, on the other hand, then can decrypt the messages from Bob here. It could store the messages, it could do whatever it wants with the messages. Then it encrypts the messages with the key between the messaging server and Alice. Then the data is secure again, going through the internet here, and Alice can decrypt the messages. So in the middle of that communication scenario here, the messaging server is able to read everything. And when you don't use end-to-end -end encryption or the applications you use don't perform end-to-end -end encryption, then everything in the middle can read everything that goes over it. This could also be um, an example with email. So Bob sends an email to Alice. The email is sent encrypted through the internet to the email server. And then Alice, of course, reads her messages or takes her messages also from the server via an encrypted line, but still the emails on the email server are not encrypted. And we can fix this problem using end-to-end -end encryption. And to fix so, we have to encrypt the data before we even send it to the messaging server. So before sending the data to the messaging server, Bob encrypts it for Alice. Now we have three different types of keys here. We have that green key here that Alice and Bob share, and we have the orange key still and the blue key still. So where do we have encryption here? At first, the line or the um, communication line between Bob and the messaging server is encrypted using the orange server. That's the same as the slide before. And the messaging server and Alice, the communication line between these two through the internet is also still encrypted using a key between Alice and the messaging server. So in the middle, the messages that come from Bob are still decrypted here and then encrypted for Alice and vice versa. So the messaging server can read everything that is here in the middle. But instead of sending unencrypted messages to the server, Bob encrypts the messages using this green key here. So we have this green line here. The messaging server then can see the green messages, which are still encrypted. So it cannot read the content of the messages, but forwards these to Alice. Still, he encrypts it with the blue key. Then Alice decrypts the messages with the blue key and finally decrypts the messages from Bob using their key. And so we can avoid that the messaging server in the middle can read anything. This could also be an email server. So when you encrypt your emails, send these to an email server, the email server cannot read the encrypted emails. When you don't encrypt your emails, your email server or provider can still read your emails. So you should always rely also on email encryption. And same with messengers, you should always use messengers that perform end-to-end -end encryption. Now I have a few examples of applications that offer end-to-end -end encryption, which I advise to use. First, when you want to perform secure email. When you download the Thunderbird um, email client, it ships or integrates or implements SMIME and PGP. These are both email encryption standards and you can use SMIME, you have to first um, get a certificate or you can use PGP where you can create your own keys. And using Thunderbird with SMIME or PGP, you can perform end-to-end -end encryption with your emails, email or secure email. You get the Thunderbird from thunderbird.net. Now we have secure messengers besides secure email. And an example for a secure messenger is Signal. Signal also performs end-to-end -end encryption and does not store any data of their users. So Signal is a very um, secure email uh, messaging protocol and um, application. And you can get it from signal.org. And I highly recommend using Signal and Thunderbird. And by the way, both of these applications are open source. Now we have text and file encryption and more for secure transmission. And here I have two different um, 
advisors I can give you. First of all, you could use Script Tool 2. How you can use Script Tool 2, we will see later in this video. Script Tool 2 is also open source and free. So these applications are all open source and free, as I said. And you can get it from uh, cryptool.org. And you could use OpenSSL. OpenSSL implements a lot of cryptographic um, scenarios, for instance, hashing of files, file encryption, um, creation of certificates, and so on. And you can also encrypt text or files using OpenSSL. So these um, four applications, I highly recommend that you use these. Now, since we know that uh, how end-to-end um, -end encryption actually works, let's simulate end-to-end -end encryption. And I use here this E2EE. -E. This is the abbreviation for end-to-end -end encryption. When you see this in the internet, you should now know what this means. And we will see how to implement or simulate end-to-end -end encryption in Cryptool 2 using AES and passwords. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool 2, and I want to show you how you can perform end-to-end -end encryption using Cryptool 2. Let's assume you want to send an email to a friend and you don't have SMIME and you don't have PGP or your friend doesn't have this, but you could download Cryptool 2 to perform end-to-end -end encryption. And we want to send an encrypted message. Let's assume you want to send a password for a server to your friend, but of course you don't want to send it in clear text. But you already agreed with your friend on a common secret. That is what you need, a secret password that only you and your friend know. And now let's create a message. So we have, for instance, here, hello, Bob, the password to our new Linux server is, and then we have a um, very secure password, one, two, three, and, uh, these special characters. And maybe we put some numbers between this here. So this seems to be a relatively strong password. And we want, of course, not send this um, unencrypted uh, in an email. So we have to encrypt this. And Cryptool 2 offers a workspace for encryption of um, text. And it produces also text that you could copy into an email. And Instead of using the workspace, I will now use the wizard. The wizard is here, this um, magic wand. When you click on it, you come to the wizard. Then you go to tools here. Then you go to encrypt with password. And then you have this input um, site here where you can select if you want to encrypt or decrypt. You can choose a secure password. I will just now say um, for testing, we will use one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, this is not a secure password, but when you encrypt with your friend, you should agree on a secure password. And here we can enter our message. We copy our message from the text file into that um, text input field, and then we go to next. This takes a second. And now we have this message here that I will copy out of um, Crypto 2. Now you would go to your email application, you would, you would write your email, and then you could just paste in your email this text here. This is Base64 encoded um, ciphertext. And the nice thing with Base64 is that it's actually, it's, it's, it is text, it's not a binary format, and you can copy it into emails. So then you would send the email, of course, without our original message here, to your friend who needs the password. Your friend then will receive the email. Anyone who intercepts the email, despite the email itself is not encrypted, could see this here. But of course, since it's encrypted, the attacker could not see what's inside the message. Your friend then copies from the email the text with copy and goes into Cryptool 2 again in the wizard. He would go to Tools, Encrypt with Password, and then we can change the encrypt here to Decrypt. Your friend has to paste the message into the text field here to decrypt, and he would have to enter the same password that you agreed on with him. So in our case, it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then when I press next here, on the next side, we get the decrypted message. And this is, I think, very, very easy to transmit important data encrypted in an unencrypted email. 
And what would happen if an attacker would try to attack this? So let's assume this here is a, is a very strong password and your attacker could try, for instance, to enter here. He assumes you encrypted using password. And when you go on now to next here, no message is um, deciphered or decrypted here. And why doesn't this work? This doesn't work because <laughs> the AES cannot actually encrypt using um, the provided password. And when, if you're interested in how this works in the background, we can change this here again to encrypt our password, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then our, oh no, we have to decrypt first. I need the original message. And with the correct password, this works. I go back, original message, encrypt. And then I go to next. Now we have our encryption method here. And when you click on this icon here on the right, on the right corner here, you will see a nice Crypt2.2 workspace. I think I have already shown this probably in one of the previous videos. And this workspace is um, yeah, quite complex. It has an encryption and a decryption method here. And it, um, how does this work? You have your original text here. You have your password here. The password then is changed using pkcs5 or pbkdf2, I think. This should be pbkdf2, I think, or pbkdf1, I'm not sure. And it changes your password into a cryptographic key. Besides that, since we use AES, a random initialization vector is used since AES encrypts here with the cipher block chaining mode. When you're interested in, ba in the basics of um, how um, the modern ciphers work, I highly suggest that you have a look at my um, basics of cryptology videos where I describe in detail how this works. Nevertheless, in the end, you have an initialization vector. You have your password. The password, of course, is not sent to the, to the uh, uh, or not integrated in our message. And when we have a look at our message here, we can see that these are actually two types, uh, two um, parts. The first part here is the init vector or initialization vector. This has to be sent to the receiver side. So we append it at the beginning of the message. And then here, the second part is the actual encrypted message. And you could even decrypt this using um, this workspace here. You copy the message, you go to the input field. You have then to change the switch here. The switch changes from encryption to decryption. And you have to change in AES from encryption to decryption. And when you then press play, it should, yes, yes, it works. It should decrypt your message also in that workspace. Keep in mind that you always have to change the AES to decrypt and you have to change the switch. Or if you're lazy, you just use the wizard of Crypt2.2. And now you could achieve end-to-end -end encryption on your computer without even installing a secure email um, client. So without using SMIME or PGP. But nevertheless, I advise everyone to use secure email instead of using this, but you could also use this. You could also use this on top of SMIME or PGP if you want to be even more secure. Yeah, and this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. You now know what end-to-end -end encryption means. It means that you encrypt the data at one endpoint at the sender side, then the encrypted data travels over different servers, different um, points where it could have been read, but since it is encrypted for the um, receiver, no one in transmission can read the message. Only the intended receiver on the other side can then decrypt the message and read it. And good messengers perform end-to-end -end encryption. And also when you do or um, when you want to write emails, you should also use secure email, which offers end-to-end -end encryption. Yeah, and as I said, this is everything I wanted to show you. I hope you liked it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, and this is really important, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, I would be really happy if you do so. This really helps me to grow this channel and it helps me to make Crypto 2 also more popular. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.